Okay, Rachel. Um, I was trying to find some good reference or resource that I could send to you to answer your question. I just couldn't find it, so I'm going to create it real fast. So uh, please bear with me if I kind of fumble through it just a little bit because um, this is totally unrehearsed. Um, so you're wanting to extract some kind of spherical shapes out of another sphere. So I'm going to get started by just throwing a nice big old sphere right here in the center. This will kind of act as a proxy for your Baymax head. I'm going to make sure that my um, translate x value is at zero, my translate z value is at zero. And um, I want to reduce the amount of geometry that's featured on this. And I'm going to do that in the polysphere inputs. Um, <clears throat> I do not need a subdivision axis nor height of 20. I'm going to try 16 and 16. Um, maybe even the height, that's a little much. I'm going to just see what 12 looks like. Maybe a little too much there. Or what 8 would look like. Um, maybe that's too few. I'm going to try 10. The reason for this is that really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the extraction uh, occur within these four faces. Now that's kind of important um, because it will help us to be able to maintain good edge flow. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to create a new sphere right here in the grid, like so. In this new sphere, I'm going to try and keep its, its poly count as low as I possibly can to still achieve the effect that I want to achieve. And um, the subdivision axis and subdivision height of 8, that's about as low as I'll go for either a sphere or a cylinder. You start getting lower than that, and it starts to kind of lose its visual identity as being a sphere or a cylinder. I'm going to click on shading and come down to x-ray. Well, not, sorry, not x-ray. I meant to go to wireframe on shaded. Okay, because I want to do my best to align this sphere with this particular vertice on that sphere. So I'm going to go into object mode and I'm going to start translating it up and around like this. Now, if I hold down V as in Victor, what that's going to do is it's going to snap um, to to these points. It, it'll snap to the vertices or snap to the intersections um, for the smaller sphere. Okay, let me say that again. <laughs> smaller sphere will snap to intersections or landmarks on the larger sphere. So I might need to actually come over here to the top view and the front view to be able to actually make this happen more effectively. So I'm going to turn on the wireframe on shaded, hold down V, and pull it out there like that. Okay, come to the front view, turn the wireframe on on shaded, hold down V, and snap it up to that point right there. So this sphere, <clears throat> the small sphere is actually probably a little large at the moment for what it is that I want to do. So I'm going to scale that down just ever so slightly. And now what I want to do is actually have it be oriented rather perpendicularly to the larger sphere. Okay, so I am going to Let's rotate it about like so. I'm actually aligning this rotate handle with the geometry on the larger one. And let's go ahead and rotate that about 90 degrees right there. Okay, so that it exists more or less like that. So the two, you know, essentially, as I was saying earlier, uh, kind of bisect one another perpendicularly. All right. Now, you know, if you're going to have two eyes, I'll go ahead and hit Command D is in dog to duplicate that. And I'm going to change the X translation on the new duplicate, make it a negative value. All right. And then from the top view, let's see, I'll rotate this one so that it aligns and it too ends up becoming more or less perpendicular to the form of the larger, or to the form and the geometry of the larger sphere. All right, now what I'll do is I'll grab the larger sphere, hold down shift and grab the smaller sphere. I want to make sure that I'm in the modeling section of the program. I'm going to click on mesh, come down to booleans and do difference. Okay, and it'll go ahead and do that extraction like so. Now this isn't 
probably a perfect extraction. If I go into smooth preview mode, you can still see it gets a little kind of weird and buggy in a few areas. Uh, what we need to do is we actually need to merge vertices. Um, so I'm going to drag a selection over that, and I'm going to come down to Edit Mesh, Merge. All right, if I toggle in and out of smooth preview mode, you can see you know, if, it, if it's less glitchy, then it's done its job. All right, I'm going to grab, do a drag over that so that it grabs those two vertices. I'll press G on my keyboard because that'll repeat the last action that I performed. All right, I'm going to grab these two, go into smooth preview mode, press G. All right, now it's a little bit more complicated right up here at the top. But I'm going to grab at least those two, press G. All right, and those didn't merge by default. So I'm actually going to go into that poly merge input. And I'm going to increase the, uh, that threshold distance to 1, and that will force it to, to work. Now these two vertices should kind of just be inert, so we should be able to more or less delete them. Then that leaves these four vertices right here that are unresolved. So I need to resolve them with the uh, multi-cut tool. That can be done by dragging or clicking and dragging until it snaps to that point, and then coming across and connecting that. Now what we're doing is we're establishing a circular edge flow now around this extraction. So um, you can see we have a four-sided face now that it is now adjacent to that four-sided face, whereas this one I believe is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll just cut that six-sided face in half into two four-sided faces. Do the same here and here, and the same here and there. Press return. All right. And now we have um, that extraction that I believe that you're looking for. I can use my insert edge loop tool as well to come in and insert an edge loop right there to try and keep that edge just a little harder, a little bit more crisp. And so let's go ahead and do this one more time. Now before I do it, I'm going to click on edit, delete all by type history, just so we don't have some conflicts with the history states, which can happen um, when you're using the booleans feature. So we'll select the um, shape that we want to make the extraction out of, the shape that we're going to be doing the extraction with, mesh, booleans, difference. All right, and now I will start merging things. Okay, and hopefully that should achieve the effect that you're looking for. Oh, look at that. Looks like it missed something right down here. And we have this extra edge that isn't really doing anything. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that with the by holding down Control and Delete so it does the delete edge and vertice. All right, and I believe that does it.